Hi there, my name is Chintz, this is Miniature Mistakes, and today we test out Turbo Dork's color shift paints. So I've had this project that I've been wanting to paint for a little while. It's a model of the Palestinian Sunbird. However, the thing that's been holding me back is that the Sunbird has this iridescent, almost shimmery plumage. Now I don't have the know-how or the skill set to be able to pull this off with the paints that I have lying around, so I decided to buy some color shift paints from Turbo Dork. Based on the information from their website, there were two paints that matched exactly what I had in mind. However, I decided to splurge a little bit and bought four extra bottles just to see what they'd be like. So let's find out if they work as advertised and live up to any sort of hype that surrounds them. In this experiment, I'm going to first check what's the best way to apply them. The bottle does say that you can apply them with a brush or an airbrush. I'm just going to see if there's any real differences between the two and whether there's any preferred way of doing it. In addition to this, I'm going to see if they need to be thinned down at all or whether they can be used straight from the bottle. And finally, we'll check what happens when we go against the instructions of the bottle and use them on a quote unquote wrong undercoat. This right here is the start of the experiment. If you'd like to skip over all the painting bits and just see what the paints look like, you can skip to the pictures in the end. Or you can skip to the individual chapters to see what a specific paint looks like under the light. TurboDork suggests the color of the undercoat that the specific paint should go over. Either white or black, sometimes either, or even both as in on a Zenithal Prime. I want to find out the best way to apply this paint. I'm going to try both with a brush and an airbrush, as well as paint taken straight out of the pot, or thinned with water in a 1 to 1 ratio. I start by using the color Miami Sunset. Turbo Dork suggests painting this on a black undercoat, so for now that's what we'll do. Each bottle of paint also suggests that 3 to 5 layers be applied. However, you can start to see the color shift effect after one layer alone. I really like this oil slick looking sheen, and I think given the right miniature, even one layer could be sufficient, at least where this particular paint is concerned. Fast forwarding through things a bit, I applied the recommended 3 to 5 layers, and these were the results. As far as using a brush is concerned, thinning the paint is definitely the way to go. As you can see, after five layers, you really start to see the brush strokes in the paint. However, when thinning the paint, the recommended five layers is not enough to reach full opacity and you would definitely need more layers. With the airbrush, both results were more or less the same. The blob you see in the thinned paint is a result of me overspraying. I did feel like I had more control when using the paint straight out of the pot. However, I also noticed that I had to manage some speckling because of paint collecting on the tip of my needle. Thinning the paint is definitely the safer option to avoid speckling, but certainly not necessary. The color shift effect itself is really quite wonderful and I do like it a lot. The blob is a bit annoying, but I'm sure in a practical situation it could easily be covered up, or maybe even used intentionally to achieve a specific look or effect. Let's move to the white undercoat. For this, I'm going to be using the mother load paint. Once again, 3-5 to five layers are recommended, but over a white undercoat. Going over with the airbrush, I hardly notice anything, even in person. There's a slight sheen on the plastic, but that's it. The brush doesn't fare any better. Let's fast forward again and get our 3-5 to five layers applied. Now the effect is noticeable up close, but it really is quite subtle. The pearlescent sheen is just that, a sheen. Having said that, it is a fairly convincing effect and does resemble the glint of Mother of Pearl quite well. However, when used in isolation like this doesn't really account for much. Either way, the purpose of this test was to find out the best way to apply these paints, and I would definitely say applying it through an airbrush is the way to go. Thinning it down comes down to preference, and I definitely find myself having more control using it straight out of the pot. I'm also finding that 4 layers seems to be more than enough, and that the 5th layer, especially when the paint isn't thinned, isn't necessary or adding much more to the effect at all. It can absolutely be applied with a regular brush, but in this case thinning is mandatory, and you will definitely need more than 5 layers to reach a suitable opacity. 
It's time to test the paints on the miniatures and see what it looks like. Here are the six paints I have available to me. From left to right, they are Blue Raspberry, Mother Load, Miami Sunset, Prism Power, Forest Flux, and 4D Glosses. I'm going to be testing these paints on four miniatures each. We're going to be using the quote unquote correct undercoat as suggested by Turbo Dork themselves, and then on the wrong undercoat. We're also going to see if a gloss varnish applied under the paint affects the finish at all. As mentioned earlier, all paints will be applied through an airbrush without any thinning whatsoever. Starting with Blue Raspberry, after just one layer, this is what we get. And after we've applied four layers, I'm not noticing any differences when applied on top of a gloss finish at all. Maybe if I look real close, but it really is quite negligible and definitely wouldn't be noticed at tabletop distance. Even so, we'll continue testing it on gloss just to see if anything should change. Now we try the same paint on a white undercoat instead of black and, well, nothing happens. I swear I'm spraying paint. There's a very, very slight blue sheen on the surface of the model, but that's it. I know nothing about how these paints are formulated, so I can't really explain why this happens. If there's anyone who understands this, I would love it if you could enlighten me and any others who might be confused in the comments. Next up, we have Mother Load. For brevity's sake, I'm going to skip ahead to the fourth layer. We've seen this one already, so the sheen on white undercoat is expected. However, look at what happens when applied on black. I have to admit that my knee-jerk reaction to all of this was to feel a bit cheated. The fact that it's not really advertised that one bottle can do two different things made me feel like it was a bit of a marketing ploy to make me buy more paint. However, I am going to say this right now, as I went through the experiment, I found that applying it on the wrong undercoat really just left me with results that were undesirable. While the paint adheres to the model just fine regardless of the color of the undercoat you have on, the color shift effect itself doesn't really present as well on the wrong undercoat. Of course, you can make your own judgments when I show you pictures at the end of this experiment, but personally I felt that of the six bottles I bought, only one of them looked sort of okay on the wrong undercoat. The rest of them were not really very good and didn't do what I hoped they would. Next up, we have Miami Sunset once again. And once again, we have that beautiful black purple sheen. This color is absolutely gorgeous. On a white undercoat, another unexpected result. It goes orange and pink. Four layers later, this is what it looked like. Once again, there's no difference on a glossy surface versus a satin surface. Next up, we have Prism Power. This is the first and only paint I have that says it goes on either undercoat, but can also be used on a Zenithal Prime. Let's see what it does. On white, I get a very soft peach colored sheen after one layer. The effect is much more noticeable on black and has this very cool metallic blue finish. How about on the Zenithal Prime Mini? I was saving this for later, but oh well. I have to say, I'm not sure how to feel about this one just yet. After four layers, we have this peach slash skin colored sheen on a white undercoat. This time the gloss does show through, presumably because the actual paint when applied on white is really quite translucent. On black, however, it does look pretty cool. On the Zenithal Prime, it has this almost cotton candy look, and I'm sure some might find this appealing, but I don't think I'm a fan of how this one looks. Next up, Forest Flux. Same process, let's speed through it. On black, the undercoat it's supposed to go on, it looks stunning. I suppose it helps the green is my favorite color, although the color shift effect isn't as pronounced as on some of the other paints. On white, we end up with the same peach color hue as previously, but it also has some of the pearlescent sheen just like the mother load paint does. And 
finally, we have 4D glosses. The dark green and purple color shift is very pronounced and looks really cool. On white, much like blue raspberry from the beginning, it ends up doing nothing. It does actually resemble the blue raspberry paint quite a bit in terms of the purple tones, but instead of a blue shift, it has a green one. I really like this one too. So there you have it. There's a look at all the color shift paints that I was able to buy. Personally, I feel that in the edge case scenario that they're supposed to be used, they work really, really well. And I'm sure if you get creative, you can absolutely use them in other scenarios as well and make something truly unique. Of the six bottles that I bought, I love four of them. For the Prism Power paint, I really do like the electric metallic blue that shows up on a black undercoat. The white undercoat, not so much. As for the pearlescent sheen, I really don't know what to do with it just yet. I do feel that perhaps if the colors around it were darker, that it would show through a lot better. Right now, it's really hard to notice, and when you put it at a distance, it's almost negligible. Overall, however, I am pretty happy with the purchase, and I find that the representations of the paint that are on the website are pretty accurate to what I bought. I think the two in particular that I started out buying are going to look great on the model that they were intended for. And if you have a similar project where you're trying to get that almost beetle carapace, shimmery, iridescent look, these paints would work really, really well. So with that, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you could do the algorithm things. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can watch more videos like this where I just experiment with stuff, make a whole lot of mistakes, and I show them in all their glory. Thank you once again for watching. Until next time.